Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having a great day so far. It's actually really snowy today in the Northeast. I think I might be getting 14 inches of snow, which is crazy. Let me know down in the comments if it's snowing where you are, and if it is, please stay warm and safe. So I am back from my hiatus, and today we're going to be doing a review of the movie Strangers 2, Pray at Night. And if you're new here, welcome. My name is Madison. And if you enjoy today's video, definitely consider subscribing to my channel. So one of the things I did on my little birthday hiatus was go and see this movie. And as some of you know, The Strangers from 2008, the original film, is one of my favorite modern horror movies. In terms of movies that came out after the year 2000, it's definitely in my top five maybe even in my top three. So I was waiting 10 years for this sequel. So, you know, of course, I'm going to be a tad picky about it. So this is the thing that ended up happening. I actually ended up grading this movie twice. And I gave it two grades. One is an F. And the other is a B. And you're probably like, girl, how can a movie have two grades? is it's you'll see as we go along but I basically graded it once as a sequel to the original film and once as how I'd feel if it was just a standalone movie and the strangers one did not exist or if it was not connected to the first strangers so hopefully that makes sense okay so we're going to start out with the grade of f that I gave it and I gave it an f based on being a sequel to the first movie so one of the main reasons I gave it such a horrible grade is because the tone changed. Now, just from watching the trailer, it's pretty obvious that the tone was going to be different. I mean, there's a Tiffany song playing in the trailer, which is much, much different than the trailer from the first film. And I even said in advance that tonal change was not necessarily going to be a bad thing. It just kind of depended how the rest of the movie went. But... It definitely ended up not making sense as a sequel to the way that this tone was. So to back up a little bit, I'm not going to be giving any plot spoilers about the new movie, but I may have to give a little of the original film. But I mean, that one's been out for 10 years, so if you were dying to see it, you probably would have seen it by now. So The First Strangers, what I really liked about it was that it really went back to being old school. It didn't necessarily do anything that was like new and groundbreaking, but what it did do was it used a lot of tactics that people don't use as often in modern horror. It didn't rely on gore, gore, and more gore. It was really so scary. Like the scariest parts of the movie happened before any blood was shed. A lot of noises and gaslighting and psychological torture and it just really just it gave you this eerie feeling where you could just not be comfortable in your seat and you really felt for the characters because it was so uncomfortable to have all these things happening pounding on your doors a record player going on and off you think you have a cell phone charger and suddenly your cell phone charger is gone and you're starting to question your sanity because you don't know did I really move the cell phone charger or did someone come in my house and take it? And it's just, it, it makes it into like this really kind of old school Hitchcockian era vibe. And it's just really scary. It just makes you shake. And I really, really enjoyed that about the first film. And that's not what we ended up getting here. So in another video I did recently, I think it's called Five Horror Movies You Should Check Out in 2018. I mentioned before I saw the movie that I was a little bit disappointed that the original actor and actresses who played the strangers were no longer playing them in this new film. So I really thought at the time that the studio didn't ask them back and it really upset me. And to be honest, after seeing the film, it may have been the other way around. Part of me has a feeling they didn't want to come back because coming back could have meant tarnishing their characters. And here's why early into the film, the strangers break their character 
based on how their characters behaved in the first movie. I even said it out loud to my mom. One of the things they did that I consider breaking character is in the first movie, they were pretty much silent. The only two times I recall them speaking is when the youngest stranger knocks on the door asking if, if Tamara's there. And the other time is the very, very eerie line that the youngest stranger utters when Liv Tyler in, is tied up in the chair with her fiancé, boyfriend, whatever you'd like to call him. And she asks something along the lines of, why are you doing this to us? And the girl just says, because you were home. That's just such an eerie line. Um, it was eerie in the trailer. It was eerie in the movie because that being a motive to torture and kill someone is crazy that the, their only motive is because you were home. Like, that's just, it's just so chilling. And so, yeah, they really broke that character by being chatty Cathy's in this movie and just speaking too much. When you're doing a sequel, I don't think you should break your, the character should break like that. I think, um the villains should possess the same traits as the first movie. One of the other things they did, and this may be considered a minor spoiler, but I'm going to give kind of no context around it, so in a way it's not, is that the first kill they ever did happened pretty early in the movie. And again, that's breaking character, because if you've seen the first one, it takes a really long time before anyone gets killed in that movie. Why is because the strangers truly enjoy all that psychological torture. That time that the male stranger in the first movie is in the house with Liv Tyler, and we as the audience see him standing right behind her, the reason he does not pounce on her is not because he can't, it's because he doesn't want to, because they're not done torturing her psychologically. And again in the first movie, when Liv Tyler's character kind of goes out to that shed and has to kind of like, crawl and run back and whatnot the strangers end up not catching up with her not because they're incapable of it because again they're not done with the psychological torture basically the original characters of the strangers that brian bertino wrote were very very obsessed with psychological torture they really enjoyed it and really wanted that process to go on as long as possible before going in for any type of kill. Definitely not trying to bash the new director, Johannes Roberts. I actually am a fan of his work. I love 47 Meters Down. I would give that movie a solid A-. I think it's really amazing. But I just, I don't think the two projects tie together, um, Strangers 1 and Strangers 2. Yeah, as you'll see when we talk about the second grade, I'm not trying to insult his talent. It's just in the context of it being a sequel. So my mom, who, when we were discussing the movie um, in the parking lot, she does not know very much about horror at all. She even admitted that, said it out loud, and it, it's pretty true. And even she, as someone who kind of has just seen some horror over the years um, through me, and she covers her eyes a lot at like really scary scenes, even she picked up at one point she whispered to me that she felt like the adult male stranger started acting kind of like Michael Myers or Jason or Freddy Krueger type person. And she was totally right. Like, he really did. And I guess that kind of goes back into breaking character again. But he almost became, like, slightly more than human. Um, and that's something we do see in those type of characters. It's like, no matter what you do, um, Michael Myers never goes down and so forth. And... Um, What's so scary about the original Strangers is they don't have any kind of, like, extra special ability. They are just two... They're just three people who are really sadistic and crazy and creepy and just really good at psychologically torturing people. They don't really need that extra little bit that makes them so evil that they're almost a little bit extra... Um, and you get the feeling that they're not fully human. They didn't need that. And um, when the male stranger started to act that way, it just kind of, it felt so out of place. You almost felt like now I'm watching a slasher. We found out after the fact that the new director actually wanted 
the male stranger to give off that Michael Myers type effect. He really likes John Carpenter, don't we all? And that's what he wanted. So I guess his intent really was to make the movie very different from the first, um, which I don't agree with, but I do respect people's creativity. So we're going to stop here for now. Um, it's just becoming kind of a long video, and um, we're having a storm here, so I have some things to deal with. But I will be doing a part two where I'm going to go over the positives and kind of what I did like about um, what the new director did to the movie and how I think it could have been a success as a standalone film. So we'll be seeing that video soon. Thank you guys so much for watching. And let me know down in the comments um, if you've seen this so far, what do you think? And if you haven't seen it, let me also know what scary movies you have been watching lately. Maybe you'll give me or some of the other viewers something new to watch tonight. And if you enjoyed the video, please give me a big thumbs up. It would really help me out. Thank you so, so much. Bye.